by uh, sacrifice of religion, uh, religious sacrifice, what you're saying is that um, people sacrifice their own perceptions to turn a blind eye to follow the faith, which is the whole point, is that you have to take that leap of faith and, uh, and, and, and not really look back, right? Is that what we're... Yeah, in some sense, I really went on a tangent there, but there's, there's, yeah, there's a few levels. There's, a, there's the level of the, of the Christian who believes in the divinity of Christ, and then there's a Christian who doesn't believe in the divinity of Christ, but the logos of Christ, and then there's the Luciferian um, Christhood, a version of Christ. Do you see what I mean? Mm-hmm. And then there's the institutional dogma propaganda control version, the state version of sacrifice, which is just as uh, in, a, in error as and in bed with the religious institutional versions of <clears throat> religious sacrifice as both the requirement of, of citizenhood. I mean, if you're a citizen of the state, you, you, you need to make certain sacrifices. And all the monuments and culture um, are a testimony to that, and and that's where the uh, the really interesting stuff starts to happen when you look at it from that from that level of like culture, and so that's what's new to me and what I'm talking about. I don't necessarily have to delve that <clears throat> in with you, but I mean I'm starting to look at the ley lines. Um, I, I work with other collaborators who are just like falling into this niche as well, and when when you start to delve into <clears throat> things that get labeled truth movement or conspiracy or whatever um, that's just kind of the X-Files part of me you know that has always been there since the early 80s when I'm looking at these <laughs> alien abduction phenomenons and stuff like that little, little did I know I'd have a, a strong personal religious outlook two decades later yeah well it, take, it takes that and I think that's a lesson to be learned it takes that uh uh, piquing someone's curiosity to, to for them to take that step because you didn't do it for anybody and, and nobody else is going to either you know it's, it's just normal human behavior you know what's in it for me and why should I bother and I think that's what's important to demonstrate is just your, your own interest something that was interesting and cool turns out to be uh epic at institution at all levels and when yeah. you're talking about the institution the state i mean come on that's just us right i mean you know there's people in the state and everyone's pretty much out for your best interest and everyone's best interest right or is there um more to it is there um uh, an underlying force uh that is people that is um uh, groups. Well, that's where that deconstruction comes in because what you just said is exactly the opposite of the reality of the way things are. Unless you're at the top of the pyramid, the hierarchy. Essentially is what people are claiming across the spectrum of all beliefs. And especially when you talk about this crisis part, component. Is there not after your best interest? I think that's important to clarify, and it, and it's important to clarify f at every level, whether that's the food you eat, uh, the water that comes in the bottles, the propaganda that you're getting on TV, they don't care about you. And they can take their Alestras and their, uh, and what have you, their chemicals that, you know, are safe, and you can turn around and look at the lawsuits that happen on a daily basis. Right. And then it's have, to have the point interest. where you and I could be could be feasibly arrested for thought crimes against the state for even suggesting people get angry. <laughs> well, and, and better than that, uh, better than that, not only could we get arrested, but we could get arrested <laughs> and, and informed on by the very people that need the most help. You know, <laughs> that are our our friends. And um, again, it comes back to to witness and a moral obligation but there at no point uh, should you have to be put in an uncomfortable situation or ostracized uh, as long as you're respectful of other people yeah and, and so there's no better time than to introduce 
and clear and you know, clarify and give people a, you know there is a, a rife a wellspring of people looking to declare per, their personal religion to give uh, some hope to put lipstick on this pig <laughs> of a world and, and make sense of it you know from a, from a spiritual reality and, and uh, things are happening also in, in, in trends trends in culture science and religion are tending towards um, a breaking of the veil that we're not alone um, yet there's still huge uh, pillars of, of materialistic deterministic and secular uh, beliefs and so when uh, the reason things are so paradigm shifting and epic is because once it's understood in some light that secularism and materialism and this deterministic behavior is ultimately atheist in a luciferian way that's the big contention that's the big mop-up operation of of uh, planetary and, and, and universe proportions in this cor thing called correcting time because you have what I perceive as a, as a broadcast of, of luciferian culture across the planet and that's embedded in everything that this planet is about and so to de declare a message of, of Jesus is really to, to be vulnerable still in the, in the culture in the planet but to do so in a way today that's that's totally up to date and not only that but offers a cogent explanation uh, to labeling and system systematically defining uh, religious experience human experience all, all sorts of paranormal phenomenon it's valid it's just as valid as any kind of luciferian taxonomy uh, of labeling and, and, and system and so yeah as a marketer I I do look to those perspectives I think reptilian marketing is appropriately defined and labeled as ultimately a luciferian proposition and I can talk to that I love talking to that as you see I'm looking to you to almost create that venue mm -hmm. for me to be able to talk about that well and to do that we're trying to build the context let me read this email that we're talking about just because you, you, you put it together real well and uh, uh, what we're talking about is an ongoing conversation about these awakenings and realizations that we are questioning uh, the validity of because the it's hard to see it's beyond normal perception and when you do see it people say you don't because they don't see it and so we're trying to make sense of it and put it together and so this is part of that ongoing conversation and your, your statement which is a good way of putting it but it, it's really not original I mean this is something that goes goes back a long ways uh, the star system wide Lucifer led rebellion of legend and lore was a real event and is tangibly ubiquitous in ourselves and our civilization down to DNA levels and up to ruling institutions the heart brain always wins is Michael's way showing to the universal father and the beloved indwelling source fragment of one's co-creative indwelling so many ways of saying this synonymously which brings us back to the metaphysical is this is an underlying part of that religion and speech tolerance and freedom commonly understood as secular values are actually sovereign creator universal creator prerogatives and not license for sustained rebellion and secession once the universe communication circuits and mother spirit holy spirit circuits Tolerance should come in the form of respecting everyone's beliefs while remaining positive and assertive within the correcting time. Collective cooperation in one's personal religion. That's the conversation we're talking about. And for, for these reasons, we need to explore the field of mercification. All these things we need to get to, and part of it, I think, is... I, I really don't think we can talk anymore without talking about... Uh, Lucifer and, and um, Satan um, write him that's the the whole basis of the story and it was the uh, uh, 
the fallen. It, it was yeah, that's where you get in, in a search for answers in antediluvian history and legend and lore that's propagated in the culture. Um, you can you can you can look from a cultural perspective of of, uh, of the messaging and the memes and the propaganda. And so yeah, that's where the whole um, conspiracy and truth movement meets head on with things like Disney and Fox when it comes to who's who's ultimately running the culture by both re you know revenue market share <laughs> you know Hollywood um, all all that stuff and so if you have a meta if you have a meta thesis on that level you don't just have to look to you know alleged revelation with things like the Urantia book you can actually triangulate validity through tangible evidence and nothing's as ancient as good old observation correlation for humans but if you're going to do more real world evangelism you go out there and say stuff and put yourself at risk you know you should have something more so you have you, should, you need real evidence you need a working hypothesis and that's where i enjoy collaborating uh, with others and always have and nothing's been more fascinating than delving into this phenomenon of correcting time because uh, the whole thing about channeling is uh, deserves a lot of, of, of the critical thinking um, but some of it is uh, this thing called universe broadcast some of it is that the fact that we're not alone um, we're just acknowledging that fact or, or trying to justify that fact or explain it to somebody else as your basis of, of any kind of motivation or, or, or perception of reality or your willpower et cetera, et cetera. you know what I mean Oh, absolutely. And I'm just stalling here because, geez, I had such a... Um, you'd sent another thing over and it was good. And then it led me over to something else. And I was brought up in the traditional Roman Catholic church. And nobody talked about this stuff. It was kind of like... <laughs> I can't believe nobody talked about this stuff. I've, if they had just said this to begin with, it would have been like, oh, well, okay, I know why we're here. Such is the case with that organized religion is, is why it, work, it evolved into such secular materialist Western Christians. And so what you, once you realize that there's a, um, you, have to, you, know, you have to be rather educated because you're not going to learn it with, through everyday culture about you know these divisions in religious belief that divide east and west or uh, would describe a religion as coptic versus non-coptic coptic means that it's the more eastern view of christhood that uh, christ wasn't necessarily a divine yeah sure he was human um and then you have all those other um you know the, the pagan perspective of saying like well there's all these other stories about um the incarnation of Christ, you know, three days, some wise men, uh, the divine feminine, but you know, you know the drill. And so when you have the metathesis of elusive re rebellion happening, um, it sets the precedent for even suggesting that, well, of course, there's a pagan perspective, because the way that things happen in the universe, for any divine being incarnating downward, it kind of follows that procedure. So that's why it's ultimately Luciferian, because what they do is take the truth, twist it around to fit a different worldview, a different view of Christhood and, 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 uh, and fatherhood and motherhood. They stick different labels on the same phenomenon. And that's how, you, that's how one can, can still be truthful, but ultimately lead into other avenues of, of worship and views of the world and reality around you which ultimately leads to the things of self. So who's going to blame who in the world, Dennis? Who's going to kill who in the world, in the world to come? Because somebody's got to go. Yeah. And, and that's ultimately what the, what the crisis is, because if uh, people blame uh, religion on the world's problems, uh, that's going to be a fallacy. And if it's such a fallacy, then maybe it's premeditated. And if it's premeditated, then are you gonna sit back and just be run over? <laughs> These are the rabbit holes of reasoning that, that human beings ultimately go down. So that's what I've observed as a history student with politics over time is you know, 
history repeating itself and, and so that again falls into the meme of sacrifice so I think it's my contention it's my hypothesis that that uh, a Luciferian grounded civilization would ultimately always have to recycle itself and, and respawn like the phoenix because it's got to not only stamp out the inherent flowers budding of the universal father and dwell human beings it's got to trim those out and destroy and reinvent itself all the time to justify its own existence and and it, and it can justify its own existence that way because it's exerting its will and it's backed up by a, a world view and a world reality that's that's ultimately based on power and separation because they're they're ultimately separate from they're seceding from and sovereign from the universal father and the universe government of sovereign Mike Christ Michael and that's where it gets squarely back into politics which makes things like genocide relevant uh, and, and just before we go back uh, to get to some uh, terms and definitions we're, we're still talking about the, the state and the institutional level of things and again growing up and I think a lot of people angels the devil god i don't know it's all kind of mushy it flows together and it all works out in the end right i mean i i think that's how a lot of people feel because that's how they're meant to feel because they're meant to feel hurried and rushed and they need something the neighbor has and instead of taking the time out to really realize it, it's much easier to keep up uh with the joneses so to speak so again at the at the state level uh, and we're talking about real people that are not only influenced by evil, but actively participate in a um, collusive group type of setting? Are you alluding to like the, some, what people would call either conspiracy or secret societies or secret groups that do things 